Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jackson Miller, and as always, a very special welcome to our viewers on OneSpotMedia.com. Now, last Friday, March 23, was the last time grade 6 students sat GSAT. The grade 6 achievement test is going to be replaced by what we're going to be calling PEP, the primary exit profile. And we're going to be talking about some of those issues, what's involved, what are the implications, is this better or worse or I don't know, black dog for monkey, we'll see. Joining us in the program this evening, we have Deputy Chief Education Officer, Mrs. Maxine Hedlum. We also have the Principal of Rousseau Primary, Owen Speed. With us as well, Janet Hazel. She's a parent who has a child at Halfway Tree Primary School. Also with us, Marlene Lennox Lynn is SBA Coordinator for Mandible Primary and Junior High. Stacy Witter Bailey is an Assessment Officer of the Student Assessment Unit. And as well, we have Desmarie Burrell Martin, who is a PTA president at St. Jude's Primary, and Terry Ann Thomas Gale, manager for the Student Assessment Unit in the Ministry of Education. Before we go to our guests and start discussion, though, let's get some context. Giovanni Dennis has this overview. These phrases by grade 6 students at the St. Jude's Primary School in St. Andrew express their relief at completing the grade 6 achievement test last Friday, March 23. But this, free at last, is perhaps the most potent symbol of the end, not just for this year's batch of primary school students, but the end of an era for an exam that has been described by a 2014 Gleaner article as placing a quote, unfair and unreasonable burden on primary school children. That view because of the sheer scope of the curriculum and the workload it involves. We'll do extras on Saturday class. We'll go from like, for extras, we will go from 2.15 to like 5.30, sometimes 6. For Saturday class, we'll go from 8.30, sometimes 4. At home now, my mother thinks she has an internet. She will look up for the past papers, print them, and give it to me for, for me to study. And then my aunt would question me on it. We had to stay like late hours after school, stay up and study just to pass. I mean, God will reward our efforts. I had to stay for extra lessons, Saturday classes, until after four or six, and. I had to study really hard, especially at home. For some who did the GSAT years ago, their experience preparing for the test was different, but the memories are just as fresh. It was a bit challenging for me, because sometimes you know, um, with all those studies that we do, when you go into the exam, it's like the last focus and memory of most of the things that we've done. Preparing for GSAT, was very challenging for me because, as you know, I wasn't really a bright student. It was easy because um, I kind of did, did already knew everything, so it never really took me anything. I um, really have to do I just work it out. Stay up late nights, you know, studying and all of that. You know, when Jesus time came in the morning, you know, everybody was like, oh. Former Minister of Education Ronald Thwaites in 2011 made this stinging critique. A case can be made out that exams like the Jamaica GSAT represent cruelty to children, masquerading as education and preparation for life. The Grade 6 Achievement Test replaced the Common Entrance Exam. Common Entrance began in 1958 under then Chief Minister Norman Manley and then Education Minister Florizel Glasspool. It existed for 40 years until 1998. It was done in one day and tested students in math, English language, mental ability and for most of its existence, composition writing. Common Entrance it did much easier because you have to share the So more time when you don't know the answer, you just get and share the something. So my time we get it right. When we all come out, we always get nervous car. More time, your parents. I expect good things from you, sir. You're glad when you look and see your name. We had the textbook and you could um, practice from it and it provided answer sheet. So you could mark yourself honestly. It wasn't really like oh it is now still, because technology take over the thing now. So most kids have it easy now, you understand? Like we, we have to go hard back then. Oh, you know, you're young and you never have any but if you help you, so me the kind of skill. So me do the exam, you know, but I never pass it. It was 
nervous. My mother prepared me from the day before. She buy pencil, HB2 pencil, or eraser, ruler, and the morning we go there and you know, it was just nerve-wracking. Common entrance had its challenges and hit several snags, as Martin Henry explains in a 2012 Gleaner column. But its replacement, GSAT, has not and could not fix the perennial anxiety attacks that parents and students face because of limited places in the high schools of choice. Therein lies the problem, as explained by then Education Minister Andrew Holness in 2011. Every year at GSAT time, weeping and wailing, can't get into the school of my choice. One school, for every place that is there, seven persons apply for it. One school putting up 400 spaces, zero applications for that space. Much of the stress on children is brought about by anxious parents who want their children to attend the best high schools. Hence, the pressure to excel in GSAT. But Dr. Fitz Russell, the man who created the GSAT program, argued that it was never meant to be a placement test, but rather an achievement test, as the name suggests. Dr. Russell maintains that if lawmakers had followed the original plan for the program's implementation, there would be less fuss about it now. Dr. Russell, in a Jamaica Observer article in 2012, explained, quote, we wanted a test that was fit for purpose, that would do the job to evaluate children's learning, to allow us to give feedback to teachers. It was never about placement. He added that the issue of placement is the issue of economics, policy and politics. We had given the best advice in terms of how to produce a cohort of children who had achieved your objectives for primary and would benefit maximally from secondary. We were not seeking to solve the minister's problem and the planning function's problem. The education ministers during the GSOT pilot phase were Dr. Neville Gallimore in 1989 and Carlisle Dunkley in the 1990s. The primary exit profile, or PEP for short, now replaces GSAT, and already questions and concerns abound. Giovanni Dennis, reporting for All Angles. Thank you so much. So let's try to get straight into some of those questions and concerns. So Ms. Headlam, let me ask you first, what is PEP then? Is it an achievement test? Is it a placement test or both? Uh, it's a profile that we are trying to um, at, uh, obtain for our students. We want to know whether they are, what state of readiness they are for grade seven. And that is why um, it is so different from the GSAT. How though? Because I'd done a program on GSAT and I heard this exact thing. That's, that's what GSAT was supposed to do, collect stats and assess where our grade 6 students were in terms of these various subject areas. But we're taking a different approach this time because we are not doing a one-shot, one-off um, look at uh, where the child is on a particular day. We are going through a series of assessment with them. We are starting with their, their performance tasks, for example, is not going to be just done at grade six. It's going to be done at grade four. Um, and we will be able to see where the child is in terms of the skills and knowledge and how best he can apply the skills and knowledge to solving problems, working collaboratively, communicating and so on. And that is one of the things we want to look for, not just for getting into another school, transitioning to secondary, but how do people fit themselves and prepare themselves for life? Um, that is what it is all about. So this exam is going to be starting with um, the grade four performance test, the grade five performance test, and then they go into the grade six performance test and the ability test and their, um, their curriculum-based test that is only going to be testing from grade six. Of course, the, one of the things that we um, see about the grade, the GSAT, is that it tests student content from grades four to grade six. But this one is going to just test the content, the curriculum from grade six 
but what we need to see is how rounded the child is and how mature and ready the child is for grade seven. Couple things if so I could on. though. So you talk about a grade four performance test, a grade five performance test, and then the test in grade six. What's involved at the grade four le level? Literally, what will my child be doing? Um, in terms we, of the test, in terms of what you're calling the performance test. Okay, we're going to be giving the child uh, a problem to solve using, and the child is expected to use the skills and knowledge he has um, to build, to solve that problem. Um, we're talking about 21st century skills such as communication skills, creativity, um, problem solving skills, um, to make sure that he works with others in his class to solve this problem. It's not just about giving a child a task on his own. The teacher is going to create a scenario, create a problem for that child, but he has to now show, demonstrate uh, a level of readiness, a level of skill in terms of how he communicates, in terms of how he um, assesses a problem, see what he needs to do, what skills he needs to apply Hold that to thought that for problem. me, Ms. Hedlam. I have to go to our first break, and we'll come back with more on this, find out more of what's involved, and we have some of your comments and questions as well. Stay with us. Remember our hashtag, it's TVJ All Angles. Soon come.